Well, this is where theater is a very interesting background because, of course, in theater, you're not allowed to just make something up. You are, um, <laughs> you are bound to say the words that the playwright has written. You know, so you got to figure out a way to say them that's authentic or you can't do it. Um, so you learn to pay very close attention to the actual words that are there and you've got to spend a lot of time doing that or else you can't make it your own. Um, so I suppose that's part of what's happened with me with the text. I'm just really, really interested in the text and it's in the form in which I have it and why it says this as opposed to this. I mean, um, the gospel writer, you know, Mark could have said this, but he didn't. He said this, and Jeremiah, you know, held up this image and not that image. I mean, all those things to me are really fascinating, and I just try to, I take that seriously, and I start there. You know, I trust that the text um, has something interesting to say, and that my job is, is to keep, you know, staying in the, in the details as they are, um, not as I wish they were, um, until something happens. You know, it's like that old Far Side cartoon. The sci you know, the scientists in the white coats, the lab coats. Long mathematical equations. Step two, and then a miracle occurs. Step three, more long mathematical equations. And the guys in their lab coats saying, yep, this is great, but we think you should be more, um, we think you need to be a little more specific in step two. Well, <laughs> then a miracle occurs, and every preacher knows what that is. But you do have to have the long, long time of saying, why this, not this? Why this, not this? You have to give yourself the freedom to do that. And I also think you can't do it in isolation. I spend a lot of time walking around and showing the text to people and dragging them into corners and asking them to read it with me and just tell me what they think. And, I, and you know, all those kinds of practices that, you know, seem really eccentric, although at Columbia it's not all that eccentric because <laughs> we, we all do it. But uh, because they they require me to constantly read the text um, in the company of others. And I, you know, I know other people are going to see it differently. So that'll be a gift. I have to constantly be asking myself as the preacher, what is it I love about these people and what do I really want to give them? What do I want to give them today? Why this? You know, why, why do they need to hear this today? Because if I don't love them, then I'm just correcting them. And that's not preaching. And you know how eager we all were as MDiv students when we came in. You know, I'm going to set the world right. I'm going to teach everybody good theology. You know, I'm going to, you know, dad gummit, I'm going to get out there and, you know, teach these people what that, well. But there are a heck of a lot of preachers out there, too, who, who spend a lot of time correcting their people and not, um, not making it absolutely clear that I offer you this word because I really love you and you need this today. And it's got to be clear. So you have to hold all those things, you have to hold all those things there. Or for me, it's not any good. <laughs>